Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this uh, first day of fall. Happy fall. We have made it. This is my favorite time of year. The weather is cooling down. Uh, we are going to see a little bit of a warm up this weekend, but I don't think we're going to. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that the 100s are gone. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do the sun dance, I guess, not the rain dance. At least we, we did have some rain earlier this week. So, um, hey, connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Austin Reed on Air. It is time to bring in my next guest. And uh, this is Joyce with Medical Ministries Inter uh, International. Oh, we got to fix that. Yeah, we're going to intervene. Yeah, we we're going to. We, yeah. we do intervene. <laughs> you do intervene. Yeah, we'll fix health. the lower third, yes, the graphic right. there. Um, Joyce, welcome. Good to meet thank you. you. Thank you, Austin. By the way, by the way, I just, so I'm wearing red, right? These are my red shoes. And my red shoes. And then you're wearing red. Ha, yeah. That's, we Thanks were supposed to, to do this interview. God was, spoke to both of us this morning, apparently. Yes, <laughs> we got the memo. So tell us, um, for our viewers that have never heard of you guys, yes. what you do. So the fun thing about Medical Ministries International, Austin, is we've been around for 24 years this November. Wow. Uh, the pandemic was not kind to us because a lot of things kind of had to go underground because uh, what we need is a lot of awareness of who we are uh, because uh, we receive medical equipment and supplies. Okay. Uh, started with hospitals originally. It was founded by Tom and Nancy Stokel. Okay. Nancy's a nurse practitioner still practicing. And Tom Stokel was um, the emergency services director at the former uh, University Medical Center. Okay. Um, so they realized on medical missions, they were throwing away things every day that when they were on these mission trips that they wished they had. Right. So starting in their garage 24 years ago, they um, had friends and family that came alongside. And over time, we're now, we've been a 501c3 for most of that time. Uh, so we're a not-for-profit, and we mainly do global health, okay. repurposing medical equipment and supplies, shipping it out to underdeveloped countries. Um, and full shipments are 40-foot containers, wow. but partial shipments, and this is the really big highlight that I appreciate being able to be with you mm -hmm. today, is if anybody from our community is going on a medical mission, they are eligible to go to the website listed here, okay. um, medministries.org, and they are able to ask for what's called a partial shipment or a carry shipment. And so as small as a box of IV supplies to a suitcase full of um, surgical instruments, it is based on what we have on hand because everything is primarily donated to right, us. Right, right. Um, but in the 24 years, um, you look awfully young, so I'm not sure you're aware of this. Um, but in the 24 years, from receiving things from hospitals, we now receive it from home health, hospice, okay. doctor's offices. Um, we've even been blessed to receive them, some things from uh, the state institutions, uh, public health department, and uh, now individuals. Because if someone receives any type of medical supply or equipment into their home, the insurance companies won't take it back. So not only are we saving lives globally, right. we are saving the landfill locally. Amazing. So tons of medical equipment and supplies uh, that are being rescued uh, for use and repurposing that would go into our landfills locally if we weren't sending it. Tell me a little bit about the need. How strong is the need right now we, in the world? We don't have enough money to hmm. ship and enough supplies to ship where it needs to go. Wow. So um, I have a colleague who specifically focuses on Ethiopia. Okay. Um, her last uh, assessment and working with the government and um, the teams there, um, and especially with the war from this last year, they have less than 10% of the supplies they need to deliver care daily in their, just in the hospital government hospitals and clinics wow. and that's not to say then what the uh, faith-based humanitarian mm -hmm. clinics and hospitals need in that country wow that so that's just one country okay um in um across the world there are thousands of children that die daily mm -hmm. just for the sake of having an iv start kit wow. and iv fluid so if you go to any emergency department here in the central valley I guarantee you no mom and dad or caregiver grandma grandpa is worrying about if my child yeah. needs to be hydrated that they're going to get hydration. Right. 
-hmm. but it, it's it's that simple, just mm -hmm. simple things. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing too with the war and um, the last time I was here, I'm just going to show my bracelet. Mm. Uh, I'm surprised it's still actually intact uh, because the war in Ukraine now. These are the Ukraine flag colors. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that's uh, been going yellow on. and blue, right? Yes, yep. uh -huh. mm -hmm. and that's been going on now over six months. Right. Yeah, I think it kicked off what in February or something. Correct. Yeah. Um, so for the sake or maybe of, March, something like yes, that. Yeah. For the sake of a tourniquet most trauma people die from bleeding out. Mm. So for the sake of a tourniquet, people die. Right. Something as simple as a tourniquet. So um, when we were able to rally, we actually um, chose to ship IV start kits and tourniquets um, to get them in. Um, because at that time, it was easier to go in through a warehouse in Poland mm. and then get things into the Ukraine. But we have a volunteer that works with us Amazing. that was running a van, um, picking up refugees to take out, but taking supplies in. So lots of networking. Yeah. Um, more than 90% of what we do is done by volunteers. Mm. So we need uh, supplies, we need volunteers, and of course we need funding to do Donations, do. donations yes. for sure. Do you mind if I expand on our, our local health please things do. that we do? Yeah, please do, health? yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm a nurse by training. Okay. I have been very blessed uh, because nurses don't know how to work at just one place. Right. Yeah. So, so when I um, <laughs> came, is, you're right. <laughs> when I came into the valley um, at the towards the end of the '80s, okay. um, moved from the Bay Area, mm. uh, but I started the migration of working in almost every hospital system here in the Central Valley. Wow. Um, so I've been very blessed um, to do that. And then over time, by working in professional nursing organizations in the Central Valley, statewide and nationally, um, been able to influence legislative health, community wow. health. Um, we are bounced between first and second in teen pregnancies here in the Central Valley every year. Our substance use disorders are the highest in the whole state right here in the Central really? Valley. A lot of community health needs that are right here. So um, we have found an outsourcing for if, if our items expire, uh -huh. um, underdeveloped countries actually are picky okay. about what they get. Even if those things could be usable, we have to be very cautious mm -hmm. about what we ship that might expire. But you could train with expired resources. Right, right. So a couple of years ago, an osteopathic med school opened. Um, the Fresno Pacific University now has a pre-licensure nursing. Okay. A city college has nursing, national, Fresno State. So lots of nursing, but what's really exciting to me is um, the younger someone knows about healthcare as an option for a career, right. the more likely they are to pick it when the time comes. Right. So uh, we have ROTC programs. Okay. We have programs in high schools and now grade schools for health careers. And I have several sources now where I'm able to send our expired supplies and let them use them for training. Amazing. So, and that's an expansion for us as an organization. Okay. But, but how wonderful is that for those of us who like to know that that everything can be used in some way. Uh, we've got about a minute left. Okay. Anything else uh, that you wanted to bring up? Anything that I missed? Yes. Um, please, a picture's worth a thousand words. Mm. I invite you to come to 1501 Broadway, Broadway and Stanislaus right on the corner. And um, I or one of my colleagues is there Monday through Friday and we would love to give you a tour. You only need to give me 30 minutes and I promise you um, it will change your outlook and your life. Uh, because we fly every flag to every country we've shipped to from the rafters in the area where we're sorting. And if you want to see the team um, alive and well and sorting, that's on Monday and Wednesday morning. But I'm happy to do a tour anytime. All right. Very good. Uh, Joyce, great to meet you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming on. Appreciate it. All right. I'm Austin Reed. This is Central Valley Talk. We'll be back with more right after this.